Welcome, my name is Carrie Treggett. I am the programs manager here at Dogs for Diabetics and you are viewing our online pause workshop. This is our pre-application workshop that is designed along with our website to give you all the tools and information you need to decide if our program is the right choice for you. Following our presentation, you will be taking a quiz before you can access our application. We'll give you more information on the application process at the end of the presentation. Let's start by discussing how a dog's nose works. Did you know that a dog can process smells individually? Here's what that means. Let's say you're walking past a strip mall and you can smell pizza cooking. Can you tell what's on that pizza? Most people can't, but a dog can smell each ingredient individually. It can smell that it has mushrooms. It can smell that it has onions. It can smell that it has olives. It can also smell all the ingredients that's in the sauce. Is it a red sauce? Is it a white sauce? So the dog can smell everything and pick out all the individual smells. Humans are the same. We have layers of scent. Each one of us has different layers that a dog will smell separately. There's our natural scent that's been given to us by our DNA. There's the scent we put on ourselves like soaps, lotions, perfumes, our laundry detergent. There is the scent we pick up from other environments that we visit. So for example, if you were to visit our training center and spend some time there, after you left the training center, you could still be admitting the smell of our training center for three days that a dog can pick up on. Finally, there is what we eat. So what you're familiar with the phenomenon, what happens when you eat garlic, it comes out through your scent and the breath and you're like, oh, for several days at a time. That happens with anything that you eat. It comes out through your breath and your pores for three days after you eat it. Last layer of scent is the diabetic low scent. And this scent is universal and the same for each diabetic. At Dogs for Diabetics, we teach our dogs how to pick out that individual scent associated with the chemical change of a rapidly changing blood sugar. Let's talk a little bit about how our dogs work. Our dogs are smelling the chemical change that is being admitted from your breath and your sweat as your blood sugar is changing. This chemical change is emitted from your liver as your body is trying to counteract the dropping blood sugar. Our dogs are going to need opportunities to alert in order to sustain their skills. And you will be submitting your blood sugar logs as part of your application. This allows us to review them and find out if our dogs are the right tool for you. Dogs can identify the scent associated with low and high blood sugars. High blood sugars are easier for dog to pick up than low blood sugars, so we reward differently. If you think about it, high blood sugars, if your blood sugar gets high enough, then people can smell it. It's that juicy fruit gum smell. Low blood sugars are harder for the dog to detect. If we heavily reward a dog for alerting on high blood sugars, sometimes they stopped alerting on low blood sugars. Think about that. If you could get paid exactly the same for doing a hard job or an easy job, which job would you choose to do? A rapidly changing blood sugar is going to provide a more robust scent. Think of yourself as a big block of dry ice. If you pour hot water on that dry ice, you're gonna have lots of that billowy fog coming out. If you pour cold water on that dry ice, you have a little bit of that billowy fog that comes out. So as your blood sugar is dropping, the scent is coming out through your breath and your pores. If your blood sugar is dropping really fast, let's say from 157 to 82 within a 20 minute period, you're gonna have a lot of that billowy dry ice smell coming off of you. If you take that same drop, 157 to 82, over two hours of time, there's a lot less scent to pick up on. A long, slow drop is more difficult for the dogs to pick up on. Dogs are going to begin to alert in environments where they feel the most comfortable. Every environment differs in its distraction level, the dog's comfort level, the other smells that are in the area, and generally in the environments that the dog is most stable in is where they're going to begin to alert. Dogs for Diabetics dogs are taught to brinzel. We have our dogs brinzel because it is a non-natural behavior that is a clear indicator when your blood sugar is low and you're impaired that you need to test your blood sugar. If we simply had the dogs paw at you or stare at you uh, to indicate that they needed to alert, 
you wouldn't know why the dog was doing those behaviors. Those are natural behaviors that dogs do to get your attention because they have to go potty, because it's past their dinner time, because they want water. And so that is why we teach our dogs to brinzel. We've explained to you how our dogs work. Now let's talk a little bit about how this impacts our clients. If a client's blood sugar levels do not result in enough fluctuations or lows, the dog will not have enough opportunities to work. Our dogs work best when a client is actively managing to be within their doctor's recommended range. The dog will need to develop confidence to work in different environments. We placed a dog with a boy in high school towards the end of the school year, and as they started working on their partnership and started working on the accuracy of alerting, it was going very well because the, his lifestyle was very routine. He'd go to school, come home, go to sports, go to school, come home, go to sports. Everything was very routine. Well, then summer hits, and suddenly the dog is thrown into a routine that actually isn't a routine. The client was sleeping in, traveling to see his grandparents, going to camp, camping, doing something different every day, and the dog did not feel very confident in all those new environments because it didn't have any confidence in the partnership with the client yet. So once school started again, and then that lifestyle routine became the same, school, home, sports, school, home, sports, alerting picked up again and became very strong. And then because the relationship had bonded and they were doing well together, subsequent summers were not an issue. It takes a lot of time and work on your part to have your dog be comfortable working in different environments with you. Our dogs are free, but the real cost is your time. It takes time and opportunity for your dog to gain confidence, to alert, and it's gonna take your time to maintain the dog's training. At Dogs for Diabetics, we place two types of dogs. We place our fully accessible service dog, which under the Americans with Disability Act is allowed public access. We also have diabetes buddy dogs who do not have public access. However, our diabetes buddy dogs are covered under the Fair Housing Act and are allowed access to an apartment or a home that says no pets allowed. Some restrictions apply, so please consult the Fair Housing Act for more information. Our dogs can also provide you with additional support other than alerting. They can alert to a CGM alarm. When you're not feeling well, they can go and get your blood sugar meter and bring it back to you. If you test your blood sugar and it says you're 32, you can send the dog to go get your juice or your glucose tabs. All of our dogs provide an added emotional support, which is not a service skill under the law, but it is a very real impact our dogs have on our clients and their families. Let's talk about our program qualifications. We are looking for individuals with a high level of motivation and engagement in our program. Historically, we have found individuals that are engaged and motivated to do the work and go through our program and stick around in our program even after dog placement, they're gonna be the most successful and their dogs are gonna work the longest and most efficiently for you. Our service area is Washington, Oregon, and California. Our diabetes buddy dogs don't have public access, so clients will need to have the ability to travel to our facility via car. You have to be a non-smoking household and all clients must be non-smokers in order to participate in our program. And that is because smoke affects the dog's ability to smell for up to three days. We ask that you've been diagnosed with diabetes for at least a year before applying to our program. And then we take a look at your need. And this is where it comes into uh, taking a look at your blood sugars and seeing if there's enough fluctuation for the dogs to work on. We like to think of our dogs as a tool to help you manage your diabetes. There's so many tools out there to help you. But if you know anybody else who is a diabetic, you probably don't use the same tools. Our dogs are a tool to help you manage your diabetes effectively, and they aren't the right tool for everybody. And so when you submit your blood sugar logs, we're looking to see, can our dogs help you within the management that you're currently doing? All applicants must demonstrate the ability to physically handle and manage a dog and demonstrate the ability to learn and apply concepts. Applicants must demonstrate an emotional stability and maturity to be successful in our program. Applicants must also be able to provide a safe and stable home environment for the dog, and all applicants must have a positive history with Dogs for Diabetics. Diabetes buddy dogs are not pets. What does this actually mean? This actually refers to the frame of mind that your dog needs to be in in order to maintain work. 
your dog will have to live by a specific set of rules in order to maintain that proper mindset. If your dog thinks it's a pet, alerting will stop. Your friends and family are gonna have very limited contact with your service dog. I once had a client call me and tell me in the evening her dog is no longer alerting. I asked her, where is your dog in the evening when it's not alerting? And she indicated that the dog was sitting on her husband's lap. Alerting is all about motivation and keeping your dog in the proper mindset. The dog was on the husband's lap and therefore had no motivation to get off a nice comfy lap and go over and do its job. My recommendation to her was to put the dog on the leash and have the dog lay on the floor by her feet. After about a week of doing this, alerting resumed. Let's talk about the source and availability of our dogs. Dogs for Diabetics will not train your pet dog to be a medical service dog. Our dogs are donated to us from Guide Dogs for the Blind and through our partnerships with local rescue organizations. We have a limited supply of dogs. We do not have an agreement with our partner organization guaranteeing us a specific number of dogs each year. Our dog supply ebbs and flows. It takes us about three and a half to four months to train each dog and our dog flow impacts the availability of dogs for our clients. We look at a dog to be a diabetes buddy dog if it fails to meet the criteria for public access under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Each year, Dogs for Diabetics budgets how many diabetes buddy dogs it can place based on the cost associated with this program. There's no guarantee that we will get a dog donated to us that meets your needs, but if you're going through all the steps of our program, we feel that there is a good chance that we are going to be able to serve you with a dog. Let's talk about how we train our clients. Client class consists of 13 sessions. These sessions take place on the weekends over two and a half months. Class is essentially a mini college course. There'll be homework assignments, quizzes, final exams, a final outing where we test all your skills. If you are under the age of 18, your parent or guardian will need to participate and pass the final exams. If a minor passes the class and a parent fails, we cannot place a dog with the minor. Training for our diabetes buddy dog clients can take many forms. Training is scheduled when a dog is identified for a client and planned by taking into consideration their needs and dogs for diabetics resources. After the client completes training, they'll be put on a dog placement wait list. Clients need to wait for the appropriate match and some clients need to wait a year or longer for that placement. On your interview day, a more accurate timeline for dog placement will be discussed. At this point, you might be wondering about our application process. Please visit this section of our website for more information. This concludes PAUSE. If you would like to apply to our program, please take the following quiz based on this presentation to gain access to the application. After the quiz, if you have additional questions on this process, please visit. Thank you for watching. We hope Dogs for Diabetics is the right fit for you and your family.